The U.S. has provided over $24 billion in security assistance to Ukraine since Russia's invasion. But inventories of ammunition and key systems are running low. We'll discuss the problem and potential solutions with Mark Kansian. He's a senior advisor at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Mark, welcome back to the program. You write that the shortage of 155 millimeter uh, ammunition is the most serious and could become a crisis. Why is that? It's the most serious because the war has devolved into an artillery duel. Uh, the front lines are stable. Uh, the two sides are expending a lot of artillery am ammunition. Uh, and the Ukrainians have a lot of Soviet era equipment and artillery, but it's very hard to get ammunition for that. So they've been bringing on uh, NATO standard equipment, which is 155 millimeter, but even that is short. The United States has sent a million rounds to Ukraine, but is now getting short itself. It's asking allies to do more. But even with the increases in uh, ammunition production, it's probably still only going to cover about a quarter of Ukraine's usage. So what would an ammunition shortage crisis mean for the United States? Well, for the Ukrainians, it will mean that they have to ration art artillery and shoot only at the highest priority targets until uh, the West can ramp up its artillery production. For the United States, it's meant that we've had to acquire ammunition from other countries uh, and to encourage them uh, to increase their production. We've hit a point now where the United States and the Pentagon aren't comfortable with uh, sending more ammunition because that will cut into what we need for our own war plans. So right now it hasn't impacted American readiness? Not yet, no. But we've hit the point where we can't really send more and it's now going to affect Ukrainian war fighting. The U.S. has stopped sending Javelin uh, missiles to Ukraine because the inventory is, is, is too low. Is that shortage harming the United States at all? It, it isn't, but again, we've hit the point where the Pentagon is not comfortable sending any more. We're ramping up production of Javelin, and there are alternatives. The United States is sending, for example, the tow anti-tank weapon to U Ukraine and has many of those available. So we can send alternatives to Ukraine, but we can't send any more Javelins. So what's the situation with HIMARS? Ukraine is saying that they want more. The U.S. is reluctant to send more. What's going on? The problem with HIMARS is, is just that we don't have very many systems. Most of the systems that are uh, available are with units. We've sent all the spare high Mars that we can, uh, so there just isn't uh, much more to send. We're sending a few of the track versions, as are some of our allies, but the problem is just availability. Does the Defense Department have the authority and the budget to ramp up production of these things that are, are, are running low? Um, are they able to do that? Are they able to tell the, the producers, produce more and quicker than, than typical? They are, and Congress has been very supportive here. They've given DOD the authority it needs to procure more munitions and to do multi-year procurement. It's given the DOD money. Uh, the problem is just time. Uh, even if the United States goes to a, a defense industry, it will take them several years to increase production and then several more years to increase the rate of production. It's a question of time. You, you mentioned before that the U.S. is leaning in a bit on um, allies to send uh, some of the things that we're not able to send. Is that working? Who are those allies that are actually sending that, that equipment? The United States has been at, uh, leaning on allies since the very beginning, uh, and that's had some effect. They've, they've sent about a third of the total uh, um, supplies that have gone to uh, Ukraine. Uh, the problem is they don't have very much either. Uh, their stocks are low. They're, They've never stocked a lot of uh, ammunition, so there's a limit to what they can do. So how long is some of this going to take to really replenish, to get to the, back to the point where we were before the, the Russian invasion? It depends on the system. For most systems, uh, our inventories are adequate and the production is adequate. There are some key systems, like we talked about the 155 millimeter uh, ammunition and some of the uh, missiles. For some of those, like Javelin, it'll probably take four to six years, even if we ramp up production. How, you write that the U.S. can take on more risk by um, reducing inventories even more. But how low is too low before it harms the, uh, the Americans' ability to respond to crises? And that's where we are now. The Pentagon is very reluctant uh, to send more of some of these key items. Uh, we could take some uh, weapons, for example, from late deploying reserve units as a downside in that that makes their training harder. But the risk is might, might be manageable. We could. 
uh, cut some of our other uh, munitions inventories and take some more uh, risk there. Uh, so there are some things that could be done, but the risk starts getting higher. Well, what other things can the Pentagon do to alleviate this problem? What we're seeing is that the, the Pentagon is providing alternatives and substitutes. For example, instead of 155 millimeter howitzers and ammunition, they're sending 105, which is lighter. It doesn't have the impact and doesn't have the range of projectiles, but it still can be very effective. It's sending a few of the track vehicles, but there aren't very many of those. But substitutions is probably what you're going to see more of. And you mentioned that Congress has been supportive. Um, now that the House is under GOP control, are you um, assuming that there might be any changes to that support? I think for the military support, that looks pretty solid. There's a bipartisan consensus to uh, provide that to Ukraine. The two places where I think you're going to see Republican Congress weigh in is one is uh, economic aid to the Ukrainian government. I think there's some reluctance uh, there among many Republicans. The other thing is oversight. I think you're going to see more uh, formal oversight, although the last uh, appropriations bill did contain $27 million to increase oversight. All right. Well, Mark, it's always good to see you. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having me on the show. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.